So over the past few years, um, there's been a new trend in the regulatory rate case process to have firms agree to a rate plan of multiple years. There's some sort of general agreement out there that if you agree to a multi-year rate freeze or multi-year rate case moratorium, that there should be some adjustment to your required rate of return on equity. Uh, what's unclear though is what that adjustment should be. So the approaches up until this point have been pretty ad hoc. You know, some people have been using forward rates, some people have been using a weighted average of treasury rates or a proxy for the slope of the yield curve. Some people think that the returns should be lower because you've given the utility certainty in their capital planning, they can go off and build plants and know what their rate of return is going to be. Um, others think that the return on equity should actually be higher because the firm is basically losing the option to renegotiate and enter into a new rate case process when interest rates rise. Unlike these other approaches that have been done in the past, uh, we took an options-based approach. Basically, the way we, you can think about it is the firm is losing the option to enter into the rate case process when interest rates rise, and the utility is losing the option to enter into the rate case process when interest rates fall. Now there's lots of frictions in this process and we believe that those frictions are asymmetric. So the utility is much more likely to enter into the rate case process when interest rates rise by a little bit. Um, they have to increase by enough to you know, uh, make it worth their while. Right? There's administrative costs, there's uncertainty in entering in this process. On the other hand, utility commission is not going to request a rate case, a rate decrease, right, unless Rates fall by a considerable amount, right? The Utility Commission doesn't want to be, you know, overly active in the market, right? Um, so it's only in the extreme scenarios when interest rates fall by quite a bit. And so this asymmetry uh, is sort of key to our options-based approach. And so we value the lost option for the utility, the call option, and we subtract from that the lost option of the Utility Commission or a put option. And basically once you put it in this option-based framework, Right, then, then the usual suspects in valuing options play a role. Right? So it's the, the timing, the length of time that the stay-out period is for, and the volatility. All right? And so this volatility aspect is what so differentiates our approach from other approaches. The benefit of our simple framework right, is then you can easily implement it using sort of standard Bloomberg functionality or um, other tools that are out there for valuing these options. And when you start with a simpler framework, you can also extend it to incorporate a variety of other situations that might arise, such as longer multi-year rate plans or rate freezes that have a penalty component built in, where the utility can actually pay a penalty to exit their multi-year rate plan agreement and uh, enter into a new rate case process early. Right? So we can incorporate that penalty component. And what, what you don't realize is that the cost of this rate case process typically gets directly passed down to the end consumer. Those costs are incorporated in the end tariff rates that you and I pay for our utilities. And so if our paper does a small little bit towards helping more firms enter into these multi-year rate plans, uh, we think it could have great benefits for us all.